right, this fly is going to be my 2-bit stone. This is a uh, obvious variation of my 2-bit hooker. And when I was coming up with this fly, I was trying to uh, get a golden stone fly, sort of medium-sized, a small-sized golden stone fly pattern um, that would be nice and heavy and work well on a dry dropper rig. And after uh, way too long, I finally figured out to use 3 beads rather than the conventional 2 beads that I used on the 2-bit hooker. And uh, in that process, uh, I started with 3 tungsten beads. And I found out pretty quickly that three tungsten beads were just too heavy. So uh, what the final version has come to be is one tungsten bead and two brass beads. In the case of this size 12, I'm using 332nd size beads. They're all the same size and they're all put on conventionally with a small hole toward the hook eye. So I've put all three of them on there. And I'm on a uh, TMCO 5262 hook. So that's a 2X long, 2 extra heavy nymph hook, standard issue uh, nymph hook. And the thread that I'm going to start with is Wood Duck Gold 140 Denier UTC. And I'm going to take this thread and I'm going to start it behind this first bead. And I'm going to wrap back to the bend. And as I get all the way back here, even with the point on the barb, I want to spin this thread up a bit. And I'm going to build a little nub from this point back. So from here backwards, down around the bend here, I'm going to build just a little nub here, and that's going to do two things. It is going to help split the tail, but it's also going to sort of elongate the body. So what I want to do here is sort of build a football-shaped nub, and it's clearly on the bend of the hook, not up onto the straight part, like so. So it's just a little nub of thread. Now for the tail, I'm going to use uh, dyed gold natural turkey biots, and what I want to pick out here are two, two of these turkey biots and I'm going to oppose them so that they're curving away from each other like so and I'm going to take the measurement on these two where they're just a little more than a half shank. A real golden stone uh, the tails are pretty long so I like to sort of exaggerate these tails a bit and the reason I use the the turkey biot rather than goose biot is it's a little softer and a little bit more durable. Um, it doesn't break off quite so easily as goose biots do. So, uh, And the natural turkey biots, you can see, have got a little bit of variegation to them. So I'm going to take these two biots, I'm going to slide them in on the bend on either side of the hook shank. And this is the, the same move I use on all biot tails. I'm going to tilt them just slightly toward me. I'm going to take my thread up and over. And as I tighten this thread, you can see those biots will square up on the hook. Um, if they don't square, you can always kind of tweak the ends a bit. And then I'll come forward over the butt ends. And I'm going to stop short of the beads here and trim these two butts out. And then continue over what's left there. And you can see I've not jammed up to the beads. The beads are still loose on the hook. Now I'm going to take a piece of small UTC wire in black. I'm going to tie this piece of wire in here along the near side of the hook. Back my thread up a bit here and catch this. My thread started to spread out. I'm going to spin it up a bit. And catch that wire along the near side of the hook. And I'm going to wrap back over it all the way back to the base of the tails. And once I get back there, I'm going to build the abdomen just out of this 140 denier thread. Um, this 140 will build up relatively quickly and build a nice cylindrical body. It's one of the things I noticed developing this fly is that a real golden stone has a pretty round in cross-section body. So I'm not building much of a taper here. I'm just sort of rounding it out. And in a size 12, <clears throat> it'll take a few passes at the thread to build that up to the right diameter. About like so. And you can see that that body tapers down at the front. Now I'm going to take my black wire and I'm going to evenly spiral wrap it up over that abdomen. I'll try to keep those as even as I can. Then I'll tie that wire off at the very front edge on the downside of that taper and just helicopter the end to break it off. 
Then I'll come in and I'll whip finish that 140 denier thread. I'm done with that. I just wanted to use that bigger thread to build that abdomen a little bit faster. And we've got some thread work coming on the thorax. So we're going to switch to 70 denier in the same color, that same wood duck gold color. And I've switched to 70 denier thread here. And I'll start this thread right over that tie off. Clip my tag out. And I usually overlap just onto that front, front rib, that last rib. Now here I'm going to tie in a piece of uh, 1 one hundredth inch Mirage Flashaboo. So I'm going to clip out a piece here. And what I'll typically do is catch this with a turn or two on top of the hook. And then square the ends, pull them right up on top so that that's right square on top of the hook. And then draw it down to length. And I just want that tag in behind those beads so that's centered right up on top of the hook. And then I'm going to take a, a strip of Golden Stone Thin Skin. It's a little narrower than the gap of the hook. You can see there when I hold that up, it's a little narrower than the gap of the hook, maybe just a bit more than half. And I'll separate that from the paper backing. I'm going to tie this on top in the same spot. So what I do with this is I'll sort of stand it up on edge and bring the thread up and over it to square it up on top and get a couple turns there. And I want to make sure that it's centered right across the top of the hook. You can see the butt end is short of the bead there. I want to make sure of that. Ultimately that last bead will sort of jam up onto the front edge there like so. so. Um, you can see that we've also got space between the beads. They're not jammed together just yet. Now I'm going to dub the thorax. And for the thorax, I'm going to use amber-colored superfine dubbing. And I use this superfine dubbing because I can dub it down very tightly and, very, and control the shape very easily. So I'm going to put this on fairly thin. I want a little longer strand than I've got here. And you can, of course, add some more as you go as you see that you're going to run out. But we'll start with that. And I'm going to start this dubbing. I'm going to build a nub on top of the tie down in the front edge of the abdomen there that's about the same size as that bead. Then I'll push those beads back together and I'll bring the thread over the top. If you've got your dubbing down tight, that makes that easier. So it crosses that bead on top. And then I'll start to fill in the void between this, the second and third bead. Then before I fill that all the way up, I'm going to cross the thread again on top and start to fill in the void between the first and second. So you can see we've crossed across the top with the dubbing and the bottom is still just beads as of yet. So now I'm going to bring my thread and I'll put just a touch more dubbing on here. One of the tricks to this fly is filling those voids between the beads, but not overfilling them. And you can see I've crossed back between the first or between the second and third bead, so I'm at the back edge there. And I'm going to put the legs in here. The legs are a Coq de Leon hen saddle feather, and this one is dyed yellow. Um, you can see it's got a nice kind of golden hue to it. It's very mottled, very beautiful feather. Um, and I'm going to take a bundle of these fibers. And pull them out at a right angle so that their tips become even. And then I'll strip that clump off. And sort of bundle it up into a little bunch, like so. Now I'm going to take this first clump and I'm going to tie it in on the far side of the hook. Let my thread roll it into place. And you can always sort of tweak the ends. One of the nice things about the Coq de Leon feather is they're very long. The fibers are very long. The feather is big, so it's very easy to tweak the ends here to control the leg, length of the legs. And I want them back to about the point on the barb there. Once I'm happy with their length, I'll come in and I'll do the same thing with a like size clump. You can see where I pulled from the feather on the first side. Now I'm going to work from the other side so I have the same size clump. And pull these out at a right angle and peel them off. Then I'll bundle that clump up and I'm going to tie it in on my near side. So I'll just pinch it in place 
and catch it with a couple of turns. And I try to measure the length to match the first set of legs. So the legs are all even. And I do want them centered on the hook. One of the nice things with the beads is if you're a little off, you can sort of tweak things and square things up. And then I'll come in and trim the butt ends of the legs out. Just with the very tips of my scissors. And I'll add just a touch more dubbing. I want to cover that tie off. I don't want to use bare thread to do it, I want to use dubbing to do it. So I'll dub just a bit of that thread. You can see you can sort of control the, the angle of the legs. And as I get to the last turn, again, I'll cross on top to the back edge of the front bead. And we'll add the second set of legs. So same move as we did before. I'll pull those out at a right angle so that their tips are even. Bundle them up into a neat little clump. I'll lay them in along the far side here. I'll catch those with a couple of turns. And I want those legs about even with the first set. And I'll do the same thing on the other side of the feather. Another clump. Peel that off. Bundle it. And set these in along the near side. I find if I spin my thread up here a little bit, it bites into the into the fibers better and sort of cinches them down. It also keeps the thread from spreading out too much. So you can see we've got double double legs on both sides. Now I'll trim these butt ends out of this clump and the far side. Always make your cuts with the very tips of your scissors. That's the narrowest end. You'll always get the closest cut there. A good sharp pair of scissors makes a huge difference, so if your scissors aren't sharp, go get some new ones. So now I'm going to pull my wing case forward. And as I do this, this thin skin has got a fair bit of stretch to it. So what I want to do is I want to give it a good solid stretch. And I'll tie it down just at the back edge of the bead with just a couple turns of thread there. And then I'll pull my flash up over the top, and I want to make sure it's centered across the wing case. I'll catch it with a turn or two. And then I always fold it back one more time and catch it with a couple more turns. That'll just anchor that in more tightly. So now I'm going to come in and trim this thin skin out. One of the good ways to trim a thin skin wing case, and this is on, on this 2-bit stone or a copper john, anything with a thin skin wing case, if you just cut straight across, you'll have stubs that stick out over the, over the bead. What I want to do is pull this up tight, and again, with the tips of my scissors, make one cut coming up on the near side and then down on the far side, you can see I'm left with very little stub to contend with. And I can cover those stubs with just a couple turns of thread. Clip the thread, and then I'll come in and trim the flash out. Sort of preen the legs out a bit. Now the last thing I do to this fly is I'm going to put a coat of Solares Thick Hard over the top of the the entire top of the body. This Solares is the uh, by a long shot the best UV resin I've found yet. Um, dries hard as a rock. It dries very quickly, and there's zero tack whatsoever. Um, a lot of companies say they have low tack, zero tack. This stuff is truly zero tack. And I'm going to take and I'll squeeze a little bit out here. And what I'll do here is I'm going to sweep these legs down. And I'm going to put this drop right on top of the wing case. You can see I can sort of bounce the needle to work the, the resin off the end of the needle all the way back to the base of the tail. And then I can sort of work it all the way down to the edges of the wing case. On both sides cover all the thin skin. You don't want to creep down onto the legs, but you do want to get all the way edge to edge across that thin skin. Sort of fill in that taper. And this resin will magnify the flash and the texture of the wing case, as well as help finish out the taper of the body. And one of the nice things about resin versus epoxy is that you've got all day to work with it. Once you're happy with your, with your coating, 
I'll hit this with my UV light for not too long. It really doesn't take very long. And it is bone dry. There is no tack, no residue left at all with this stuff. It's fantastic stuff and it's actually less expensive than everything else we've been using. And that is our finished 2-bit stone. It uh, is a great little golden stonefly pattern. 12, 14, 16 is probably my most commonly used range of sizes on this one. I tie it as big as an 8 for the bigger stones, but uh, uh, 12, 14, 16 is sort of that medium-sized golden stone that's present in the rivers around here, around Colorado all, all year. Uh, Arkansas, Colorado, South Platte's all got lots of golden stones in it. And this fly matches up to them very well. It's a nice heavy fly, slim profile, so it sinks and stays down. Uh, gets down where the, where the fish want to chase after it. Really a pretty fly when it's all said and done as well. So You can see the three beads are exposed across the bottom and the crosses on top are covered by the, the wing case. And that is the finished 2-bit golden stone. Twist a few up, put them in your box, take them for a swim. I think you'll be happy.